On the left side, we can see the actor types. Each one of these has a specific purpose and can individually be spawned. Let's first save our level as test one. Now it wants us to complete a couple of steps. We do need to add a team one spawn point. If we're trying to save now, it says, you know, we need to have a couple more things, which is team two spawn point. And on top of that, we also need to set a level camera, at least one. These level cameras are used when you play the game. You uh, look, yeah, it's, it's your look into the level, basically. So the level is now saved. Let's create our first model. So we switch the actor type to model, pick our texture, choose a color, hide the menu. And now we're just gonna pick a location, can be any location. Pressing C, this will give us our build tool. Now in this build tool, once this is spawned, we can create our model. So we're gonna place the blocks down. Now press V, we get a paste option. So we can paste back into our build model. Pressing V again gives us the new updated model and we can stack like this. Now, if we wanna say, let's create a little model in between. We can do that by pressing C, that gives us our new copy node. And now we have that and we can spawn it back into our base model again. Okay, so pressing V gives us a full copy again. Right mouse button erases blocks. Grabbing a different texture. You can see that you can keep spawning until it says there's enough being spawned. There is a limit to how many blocks you can spawn for a model, that is. I think the limit is set to 4,000 or something. Which obviously is for performance reasons. This is this is not a, a voxel engine by any means. This is just Unreal Engine using instances. So we're gonna save the model. We're gonna name it test model. Hit save. Now we're gonna hide the menu, press T. This will remove the build model. Okay, now we're going to load in the actual model we just created, so we can spawn it all around the level. There we go, our model is now in the scene. Here I'm rotating with F and the mouse wheel. And this is rotating with G and a mouse wheel. As you can see, the textures on the models are world aligned. This makes sure that the textures are, you know, not that repeating. So here I'm using Alt on a model and clicking the model to remove it from the world. So let's save again. Now we're going to use the line tool. So I'm going to press B. And whenever we press B, we get a point. If I now use shift space, it's going to spawn the models along that line, as we can see here, which makes, you know, rapid level building very freaking fast. Okay, let's reload the level. Now we're going to use the line tool in a build model. We're going to choose a texture and a color. 
press C. And now we're going to press B. Then again, press B and hit space. Using the line tool to make a rectangle. As of currently, when you do this, the corners, it spawns a double. So we need to remove those, which is probably going to be fixed in a future update. Using the line tool just a bit more. So you get to see how fast you can create a model with this. There we go. And now if we press V, we get the whole model again and we can paste it into itself. So you can create a building or a wall or whatever you want very fast. Don't forget you can use multiple block types per model as long as you stay within a limit of 4,000 blocks total. Okay, let's reload the test model and place it into the level. So once our model is in the level, we can add it to model. Now I do need to first select it, left mouse button. Now I can start erasing or adding blocks. So let's save the level. Go to the main menu, go back to the level editor and load our level, test one. And we get to see the changes that we made to our model. Now this is a spawned in model. This is not our original model. So if we spawn back in our original model, we can see that that one is still unedited. So this gives you a per model option to edit it. You know, if, if you, for instance, make a wall, you don't want to put a door in. Later on, you can put a door in there if you want to. So that's pretty powerful. So this is basically how you create models in the game. Now let's uh, create a little campfire. This is already pre-done, so here it is. And we're going to add some particles to it. So with the actor types at the bottom of the list, we have particle system. This will give us a drop-down of multiple types, which can be expanded in the future. Now obviously I need to place it correctly because, you know, we want the fire to go upwards. So keep in mind when you're designing things that the block is going to be oriented to whatever it touches. Hey, there's no sound yet, so maybe we can add some sound to it, right? That's what we want. We want to have a cool level with sounds. We pick the actor type Audio Atmosphere. We choose a different file folder. And then we pick Campfire. We add this file. Now we can test it. And there's audio options below it in which we can set the individual audio options for that audio atmosphere. So we want to increase the max loops high number so it just keeps looping the audio file you can also add multiple audio files per audio atmosphere which is great like if you want to have bird sounds dog sounds that kind of stuff or music that keeps going from one song to the next you can absolutely do that you can also add your own sounds to the game which is great because it imports at runtime so here we have the sounds folder in the game folder and within that, we have subfolders. Just put your own folder with your own sounds in here, and then you can use those sounds within the game. So while you're making your level, you can pick your own sounds, put them as audio atmospheres in the level. You can then pack your level as a zip file with the sounds folder, put a readme file in there so people that want to play your level know where they need to put that stuff. Then they can load in your level with the sounds and you can play it together. Easy sharing. To get to the actual level files, you go into 30 seconds to kill. Then we go into the saved folder. And then we go into save games. And in here we can find all the files that have to do with our levels. Also our models. So make sure that if you're going to share your level, you're going to share the left 
whatever your level is named .safe file, all the model files that you need for your level, and then also the sound files in that sound folder we just talked about. Pack all that up into a zip and you're ready to go. Okay, back to this stuff. So here I'm adding multiple harmonicas. And you can see they're now all in this list. We can remove individual files that we want to. I'm also going to set the loops to one because after each play, we want it to switch to a random sound pick from this list. I added a little bit of a delay, five to 10 seconds or 15 seconds. And that makes sure that the sounds don't immediately play one after another. Now, depending on how large the sound file is, and I strongly recommend you to use MP3 files to keep the file size low, because that makes the importing very fast. But you can also add complete songs. Like if you want to have an MP3 playing in the background for five minutes, you can do that. Now I'm going to save the level for a moment and go back to the main menu. Go into the options and set the graphics to high. The reason is that the fog that we're going to adjust now needs to be set to a high graphics quality. So this is a fog actor. As you can see, there's fog in the distance. And now I'm going to pick a different actor type in medium fog. And you can see now there's more fog. So we have soft, medium, and heavy fog. We can also adjust the way the ground texture looks. It's tone tiles. And also the backdrop. Currently there's only a couple. I might add more in a future update, but it's at least a start. Switching to trees and clouds and grass. And you can see it's all pretty performant pretty fast to do this. Now let's talk a bit about level boundaries. So if you want to create your level and you want to keep it small, then you need a level boundary. Or if you want to make it bigger or have it a certain shape, this is why I created these big boxes you can put down. And you can see even my level editor actor cannot go through them, so it works great. Adding a couple more. There we go. Saving the level. I'm just going to show the complete steps here. Going back to main menu, multiplayer, loading in our test level, making a game room, spawning in. Now I'm going to walk up to the invisible box, and we can clearly see that our guys are going to do something. Now, back in the level editor, here we can see I'm adding a couple of reverbs. I have a city reverb, a church reverb. If our character overlaps that while the game is running, and we should, that's the way it's going to sound. I'm going to add a couple of models into the level. I need to switch it back to model in the actor types. Go. There's a bit of an echo onto the sound, which is great for creating more atmosphere in the game. This is also a good time to show that stuff is destroyable. There is no physics. Well, there's only physics for collision, but there's no actual physics that blocks it and fall down, so don't expect that kind of stuff. Not the purpose of what I'm trying to build here. Okay. Let's add a couple of lights. Now, there's a couple of different types of lights. Candle lights for on tables and walls and that kind of stuff. 
You can see it has a collision sphere around it. You cannot put any other light in that area. Not going to happen for performance reasons. Also, these candle lights do not cast shadows for performance reasons. I wish I could just throw any light type in there, but I can't, sadly. Um, these lights actually do cast shadows. Just don't put too many too close to each other or the performance will completely suck. So keep an eye out on your FPS while, you're, while your game is running. Test often. That's all I can recommend on that. I added a couple of models. I'm going to show you what happens to lights when you shoot them. They actually do stuff. So here we go. When you shoot a light, it falls down, but it also destroys the light itself. So if you want to make a room darker, that's your way. These don't destroy the light, but they do get physics and fall down, which is nice. Back in our level editor, we can now get to look at this section here. Saturation, time of day, and sun rotation. Saturation all the way to zero gives us black and white. So if you want to make eerie atmospheres, that's your way. And up in the saturation obviously gives you more of a retro vibe to all the things. Then we have time of day. If the slider goes all the way to the left, the sky has a different color than if it would go all the way to the right. I did this on purpose, so in the morning you get a little bit of a different color in the sky. And of course, depending on how much fog there is in the level with a soft, medium or heavy fog, you get the nice sunbeams which I set to show into any direction that you look at. The graphics do need to be on high for the fog to show up. So you can clearly see this gives a completely different result when the sun goes down on the other end. You can also make it completely dark. Do the rest with lights, just keep in mind that lights are costly. But yeah, if you want to create a horror-themed level, you can completely do that. It's all up to you. There's also sun rotation, so we can see that the sun is behind that mountain now. We're going to shift it right to a different mountain, just because we can. So if you want to have specific lighting, you can totally set that up. Change it to desert. Yeah, that looks nicer. And of course, if we now save the level, that's all stored into your level save game. This is also the reason why I used save games, so you can share them with each other. Every, anything that can be shared has a .save file. So what can we actually create with this? Well, you can create your own models, right? So we're going to look at a castle. This is built up from a lot of different models. But the cool thing is once you have one model, you can spawn it in multiple times and then the level creation goes very fast. And it's actually fun to create models. So here is our castle. To create all this, I spent, I think, four to five hours. Now you can see if I press Alt while I'm hovering over a model and there's a light attached to it, the light's going to fall down. That's what it's programmed to do. Just make sure that you do not save your level when the light is falling down. Otherwise, next time you load it, it will be on the floor. Just a friendly reminder. But I am showing you that everything is created from these models. Like the roof is a complete model. And I actually built the roof in four different parts, then rotated those parts and pasted them back into a new model to create the whole roof. So you can go all nuts with your imagination 
on how to use this system. I think it's pretty, pretty nice. Yeah, all the nice sounds are in. You can see the, the yellow arrows. Those are pickups, which means that a package will spawn there that will give you ammo of a specific gun type that you have already unlocked. So let's load in the Western level, West Town. The game currently ships only with two levels. That's what I wanted to do. Uh, I leave it up to a lot of people if they want to, to create more levels. I'm probably going to create a couple of more in the future. But yeah, we, you know, we can share models if we want to, right? That's cool. And then from these models, we can create complete levels. So, you know, it's awesome. You just share a model file. Someone else dumps it into their hard drive and they get your model. And now they can just build a whole thing with it, which is great. A lot of possibilities. A reason for me building this is it is my framework. I'm going to use it for multiple games in the future, which are not block based. But they are going to use the same level editor and the same spawning system and model building. So even though those games are not going to be pure cubes, they are going to use bigger models and then I can build very big cities or whatever I want to. And it's going to be super performant. So that's going to be very nice. So this is my framework and I wanted to create a little game with this framework. So that in the future, I never have to create the same system over again and again and again. That's just a little bit of a backstory why I was doing this. Currently, I've spent over 800 hours creating this whole thing. Um, I'm a hobby. I'm a hobby dev, right? I don't earn money from this. I don't want money from this. So play it when you can play it if you want to. Um, it uses a Photon Cloud server. If this game would go crazy, which I will not expect for any sane reason, but if it would and the server would be clouded, I'm not going to pay money for the server because I don't earn money. That's just how it is. This is my hobby. Um, but I, when that ever happens, I will allow players to set up their own Photon server, which is completely free, and then they can just add, you know, their own server credentials in there and just keep playing which is sweet as well yeah so everything is destroyed that's cool this is why i used models to do this because in multiplayer this needs to be fast now with just a couple of revolvers it's not a big problem if you start shooting with an uzi yeah you know removing all those blocks gets a pain in, in the system's ass and using all these models keeps everything fast even the loading of the level so i want to thank you um this is the tutorial i hope you like what you see and if you want to leave a comment do it below the video i have a discord uh, you can drop in there have some fun leave some suggestions maybe i'll do stuff with it thank you for watching